this module we are going to discuss the amplitude shift gain the concept of amplitude shift gain as well as its transmitter and receivers in the previous module we have discussed that this is this amplitude shift gain is one of the uh, digital modulation technique uh, in which the amplitude of the sinusoidal carrier is switched between the two levels of the input digital signal here message signal is digital in nature here in the first waveform you can observe this is a uh, digital signal and this is our message signal which is in the form of zeros and ones and based on this uh, input uh, binary data the sinusoidal carrier amplitude will change the amplitude of the sinusoidal carrier is switched between the two levels if the data bit is one it is same as the original amplitude of carrier that is a suffix c here we are considering the expression for carrier as ac cos omega ct if the amplitude uh, in the uh, if the amplitude ac is varied or switched between uh, the data bit 1 and 0 maintaining the frequency and phase of carrier as constant it is called as um, ask signal amplitude shift gain signal so it is also called as on off signaling because uh, if the amplitude of the carrier is same as it remains same that is ac cos omega ct for data bit 1 and for the data bit 0 we are considering the amplitude of carrier as 0 uh, so the uh, coming to the mathematical expression of binary ask in binary ask two bits are grouped per symbol that's why it is called as binary ask or simply you can call it as amplitude shift key so the basic expression or mathematical expression for ASK is same as carrier AC cos omega CT. Here the frequency remains frequency of carrier as well as the phase of the carrier also remains same. In this example, we have taken the phase of carrier as zero. Uh, so this is when the input is one. So in the figure, you can observe that the carrier ASK signal amplitude is same as carrier for the data bit one. For the data bit 0, you can observe that the amplitude is 0. Uh, so this is uh, also called as on-off keying. So binary ASK is also called as 2-array PSK. For the sinusary 2-array uh, PSK or on-off keying or OOPS, it is called as OOP type of signaling. And for example, if you consider the sinusoidal carrier as AC cos omega CT, the power dissipated per symbol is uh, uh, expressed as the maximum that is uh, maximum value AC divided by root 2 because we need RMS value. Maximum value by root 2 whole square divided by R. So we can uh, represent the power dissipated per symbol uh, in the sinusoidal carrier signal as AC square by 2R. We already have written the mathematical expression for ASK as AC cos omega CT. Now we are going to represent the amplitude of carrier in terms of the power dissipated per symbol. So we can write it as because PSC is AC square by 2R. For normal and normalized input, you can consider R as R, R as 1. So AC can be written as root 2 PS. So root of 2 PS into cos omega C3 for data bit 1. And when the input is 0, it is 0. Here you should remember that TB is a bit duration and ds is a symbol duration similarly uh, just uh, again rewriting the expression root 2 into ps into just multiply and divide with respect to ds then you can upon splitting this you can write it as uh, root ps into ts because we are going to represent it in the form of one bit energy carrier so uh, we can write PS into TS, uh, power into time. We can express it as symbol energy, PS. And we, let us assume this whole factor, root T by TS, as root 2 by TS cos omega CT as one bit energy carrier, which is phi 1 of T. So you, uh, you can see that S, A, S, K of T, the mathematical expression can be again rewritten as root ES into phi 1 of T, for data bit 1 and for 0 it is it remains same that is 0 where es is a symbol energy which is equal to ps into ts and for binary psk remember that bit duration and symbol duration are same because only one data bit is transmitted that may be 0 or 1 
one bit is grouped for symbol. In binary ASK, only one bit is grouped for symbol. So uh, here you can see that this mathematical expression represents that amplitude shift keying signal is written in terms of a symbol energy and one bit energy carrier to evaluate the Euclidean distance. So in the plot, you can see that X, the axis represents the one bit energy carrier. Here we are going to express our ASK signal in terms of, we already expressed it, it as a root ES into phi 1 of T. Uh, so uh, if you see uh, to evaluate the Euclidean distance between the two points 0 and 1, it is it can be calculated using the signal space representation using the one bit energy carrier. Let us evaluate the distance between the two points. For uh, when the data bit is 0, we know that the energy is 0. And for the um, data bit 1, we obtain the energy as root ES. So taking the difference between the two points, root ES minus 0. So it will be root over PS into TS because symbol energy can be expressed as root PS into TS. So root ES can be written as root over PS into TS so minus 0. So you can uh, obtain, finally we can obtain it as root over PS into TS. So remember that TS is equal to bit duration. Simple duration and bit duration are same for binary uh, type of keying techniques. Here, another point that you should remember is that as the Euclidean distance increase, so once the Euclidean distance has increased, the isolation, uh, so as the distance increases between the two points, obviously the isolation between the two points will increase. This will reduce the probability of error. But in the case of ASK, the Euclidean distance between the two points is very less. The probability of error in ASK is very high. Let us go through the generation of binary ASK. In this, in order to generate an ASK signal, just to take the unipolar NRZ signal and multiply that with sinusoidal carrier. Upon multiplication, you will get a binary ASK signal because it has only two amplitudes, that is, same amplitude as carrier for data bit one and for data bit uh, 0, it is 0. And that binary ASK signal is passed through a bandpass filter. So our band limited ASK signal has a range from FC minus FB to FC plus FB. So just to, you have to pass this uh, unipolar energy and uh, science total carrier through a multiplier. Just by multiplying these through signals, you can generate the ASK signal because 1 into carrier gives you carrier and similarly zero into carrier gives you it leads to zero amplitude so unipolar energy is multiplied with sinusoidal carrier to produce the ASK signal to get the band limited ASK just pass through the band pass filter having a cutoff of plus or minus FB Uh, this, these are about the waveforms. In the way you can see that this is a data whose uh, bandwidth range from minus FB to plus FB and carrier frequency. Uh, this is a, a time domain representation and the frequency domain representation. We know that uh, it can be represented as two impulses located at plus or minus FC. And uh, 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 let us see the carrier frequency FC plus or minus FB after ASK modulation. This is the time domain representation. And the frequency domain representation is that uh, the carrier uh, frequency is spread up, uh, with the bandwidth of FC minus FB to FC plus FB. So neglecting these uh, negative frequencies, uh, you can observe that the bandwidth of ASK signal is FC plus FB, that is upper cutoff minus lower cutoff is FC minus FB. So you will get uh, FC, FC gets cancelled and you can see the bandwidth of uh, ASK signal as 2 FB. So practically the bandwidth of ASK signal is 3FP. And two types of detection techniques are there. One is uh, binary ASK uh, uh, demodulation. Let us see the two types of demodulation techniques. One is coherent and non-coherent. In the previous module, we already discussed that uh, in the coherent detection, we will use a synchronous carrier as the second input to the multiplier. Uh, so, uh, just in the receiver, the same principle is used. Uh, just the ASK signal is again multiplied with uh, carrier to produce a signal, and that will be reconstructed by using the leaf flow bus filter.
So this is a coherent detection. This is a block diagram of coherent detection of ASK signal. Here, uh, um, for a synchronous detection or coherent detection, two criteria we have to satisfy. One is frequency or phase synchronization, which is provided by the synchronous carrier, and timing synchronization, which is provided by the, uh, the, the switching instance of the receiver. Here you can see that uh, the input to the demodulator section is noisy ASK, and that will be multiplied with the carrier. Let us go through the mathematical analysis. Uh, just we are taking the carrier, uh, synchronous carrier as cos omega ct because frequency or phase must be matched. There is no need of amplitude. So that's why we have taken it as one. Just uh, but the frequency should and phase should remain as same as that of the transmitted carrier. Uh, now it, the, this carrier is multiplied with the noisy ASK signal. So ASK signal being of a general form. It is AC cos omega CT uh, that is multiplied with the carrier. So multiplier output will be ASK signal into carrier. So AC cos omega CT into cos omega CT. So you will get AC cos square omega CT. So cos square omega CT can be represented as 1 plus cos 2 omega CT divided by 2. Upon simplification, you can get it as AC by 2 plus AC by 2 cos 2 omega CT. Now uh, this is for data bit 1. In fact, data bit 0, we know that ASK signal is 0. 0 multiplied by cos will also be 0 only. So now this multiplier output is fed to the low pass filter. But this low pass filter does not allow the higher frequency component. So this component will be eliminated by the low pass filter, resulting the multiplier output as just AC by 2. So low pass output is forwarded to the decision device. And this decision device compares the low pass filter output, that is, this AC by 2 magnitude is compared with the predefined threshold value. Uh, so, if the data will be 1 when the low pass filter output is greater than V reference, and the uh, reconstructed data bit is 0 when the low pass filter output is less than or equal to V reference. So, finally, the coherent detector, we know that because of having synchronous uh, uh, carrier here. It will uh, result in less probability of error, but uh, the practical implement, practically it's, uh, the implementation process is somewhat difficult. So for laboratory purposes, we can prefer the non-coherent detection, uh, whereby the noisy ASK signal is up, initially applied to the bandpass filter, having a range of Fc minus Fp to Fc plus Fp. This is applied because this is uh, required because our ASK signal range from uh, this is the ASK signal range from Fc minus Fp to Fc plus Fp. So that's why the bandpass filter cutoff uh, range must also be same. And the post bandpass filter, we will use the envelope detector. In envelope detector, we know that we, it, can, it is a combination of rectifier and low pass filter. This rectifier converts the signal upcoming from the bandpass filter or band limited ASK signal into a pulsating DC. That will be smoothened by the low pass filter. So finally, low pass filter output is applied to the decision device. Here again, the decision device compares the low pass filter output with the predefined threshold value. If the low pass filter output is greater than V reference, the data bit will be 1. If the low pass filter output is less than or equal to V reference, then the data bit will be considered as 0. So this is all about the non-coherent detection of binary ASK signal. So already we discussed this envelope detector. It is a combination of rectifier and low pass filter. And uh, uh, in this module, we have discussed the ASK transmitter or receiver, two types of detections. One is coherent and non-coherent uh, receivers we discussed. So coming to the advantages of ASK, here the design of the ASK transmitter and receiver is simple. Because we just we are using a multiplier, even at transmitter and as well as the receiver, we are using a multiplier. Uh, so it is very simple and inexpensive. Uh, the transmitter section remains idle during the transmission of ASK, but during the input uh, for the data bit zero, the transmitter simply remains idle. So we can conserve the power during the transmission of zero. And it, it offers practically the bandwidth required is 3 FP for transmission of a bit of uh, duration TB. And uh, uh, the drawbacks are there. 
ASK signal is highly susceptible to noise because it has amplitude variations. And similarly, already we discussed that Euclidean distance is very less, just it is root ES. So the isolation between the two levels will also be less, which may lead to high probability of error. So it offers low power efficiency. These are the pros and cons of binary ASK. And these are the various applications of binary ASK signal. Uh, here you can see that these are used for home automation, industrial network devices, wireless base stations, tire pressure monitoring systems, even for transmission of MOS codes, that is dots and dash, transmission of dots and dot, uh, dot and uh, dash codes. Those are called as MOS code. Uh, we, will, we can use binary ASK signal. Uh, so in this module, we have discussed uh, uh, the ASK transmitter uh, section as well as uh, the ASK coherent and non-coherent type of detection. In the next module, we can discuss the phase shift keying technique. Thank you for listening.